Cole. And thank you today for tuning in. This is the Adam Messer Show. I'm your host, Adam Messer. And if you are now just tuning in, my special co-host today is my good buddy, Josh Vasquez. Hello. Welcome back, sir. Hey. So in the last hour, um, if you're just now tuning in or if you're catching this on the podcast or whatever, um, John C. Arnold. That's me. That's that's yep. John. <laughs> and Stephen Arnold. Uh. Or with us, so we were talking about storytelling, and we were talking about like we didn't. Not, I don't think we really talked so much about craft, but we were talking a lot, a lot about storytelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you know, over the the break, uh, I was asking uh, John and Stephen if there were anything that you know that they wanted to you know, hit on this hour and and talk about, and I think y'all both had some really cool uh, topics. Josh, did, did you have? Uh, Cause I, I want to I want to talk about dead pixel pictures too. Yeah, we can. But did you have anything you wanted to hit on or talk about? Uh, no, I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I always tell people that I'm like I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, no, uh, no. I mean, I've, uh, we'll definitely spend some time with uh, John and Stephen on what they're talking about. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's one of the things I like about doing this uh, community radio show is like we all get a chance to just kind of you know hang out and talk. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's fun, and I, th- I think that's the you know uh, there's so there's so much stuff out there nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's so much content out there. There are like a million different podcasts, like probably more than a million. Yeah, you know, but um, oh, yeah. which is funny, like because like you were saying, like if you're you know just tuning out, tuning in on the podcast, like if you skipped ahead like an hour on the podcast and you didn't listen to the first half, that's a little weird. <laughs> that's how you listen to podcasts. I mean, I don't want to shame you or anything, but that's you know. You, you never know. Yeah, you know, yeah honestly, you don't. I, I've had sometimes on the podcast, I'll have more listens or views because yeah, I put on YouTube too. Yeah, on the second episode than I do on the first. Yeah, like sometimes the first one will have zero on YouTube, yeah. but the second one will have like four or five hundred. Yeah, I'm like, how does that even happen? <laughs> like, how, wow. you know, like how did how did you just skip the first hour? Man, they're, like, they're, like the first hour is like a warm up round for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, we're, we're like round ten now. Yeah. You know? Y'all, br- y'all bring your A game in the second half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This there is this go. is the one that really counts. Last hour is just practice. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> but uh, loosened up now and familiar. So yeah, yeah. You know, you, you know the drill now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so okay. Uh, so over the break, uh, John, you were telling me that you got a new screenplay, right? Yeah. So can you talk um, about that? I can. Uh, so actually, this screenplay is is based off of a personal short well personal essay that one of the very first people that i met in savannah when i moved to scad um she was a transfer student with me at my transfer table for like orientation Mm -hmm. into scad for these not freshman people and um she was a I think she was a film major at that time but then she turned to a dramatic writing major i think that's how that works um but uh for her graduate she a uh, graduate degree that she's getting at scad again um she wrote a personal story uh, about a, a time in her life that was really traumatic for her and um she asked me to write a screenplay version of that essay and i've actually i've actually had a copy of like a, a draft of this for almost a year at this point, to be honest with you. Um, 2020, you know, kind of got away from everybody. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and finally mm-hmm. got to finish up like the final, well, almost, I guess, I guess it'd be the final draft. I mean, it could probably go through another stage or two. Um, but it's, um, I, I don't know. I don't know how much I can talk, uh, talk about now. It was a past sexual trauma of hers, mm-hmm. um, that she had and she, I, she wrote an essay about it and she wants to tell this story to help other people. So, but I won't talk in too much detail about it. Um, but it's just how that she, um, she got over that trauma with, um, some, I don't want, it's all, it's, it's also a faith-based, um, film. Yeah. I don't know how much I can also talk about it because of that aspect. Well, 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 how, how is it adapting a story like that to a screenplay? I mean, it's not your story, so you don't have that, 
that personal connection, I guess, even though like you knew her and like you were you were close yeah. friends with her and all that. But like, yeah. what was that like trying to adapt somebody else's story into a different format? I actually really enjoyed the a- adaptation process um, because there's 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 a lot of restriction that is put on the story you can tell because you're, you're trying to be as true to the original story as possible. Mm-hmm. But within that, I find there's a lot of creative freedom that you get um, because you have these boundaries. Um, you get to be able to take that story and make it as deep and, and, and as rich as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, the essay itself is not very long. It's only, mm, I don't know, maybe four or five pages. Um, but the final screenplay turns out to be about 15 pages, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, is probably almost about the same amount of typed words on a 15 page screenplay as a five page essay. Yeah. Um, just because of formatting and things like that. But so that's about, it, it about really 15 fun. minutes I, long. Is it the short film uh, then? Yeah, it is a short film. Um, and that's, that's all I've got kind of the guts to write. Yeah. Now. I, I, I have, attempted to write some features and i've gotten about 30 pages in that was actually you know thinking about it and talking about it out loud i've done a lot of adaptation of true life stories yeah Uh, the one feature that i have i it's it's based off of someone's life Mm -hmm. and i wrote a short screenplay of that one and then i started to write a feature screenplay of that one um and for lots of reasons um I have not finished that screenplay uh, because a lot of things in that person's life has changed that would yeah. change the screenplay. Um, but yeah, this is I've been, I've done a lot of adapting, I guess. That's um, probably, it's really fun. Yeah, that's probably one of the hard things about adapting like real life situations and you know people's stories and all that because you know people's stories don't end until you know they end, and even then their story continues to go on through the people that they've you know left behind and stuff like that so even when you're trying to adapt somebody's life story you know like their life story is not over you gotta have to kind of almost pick that end point where like this is where we're we're finishing <laughs> this is where the movie right. ends you know the story keeps yeah. going but the movie ends here you know kind of fortunately deal. this one has it has a pretty solid end and, and um jamie uh, my friend who wrote her essay yeah she's we're very happy with how this screenplay has turned out and that actually that gives me a lot of comfort um because i was kind of nervous to yeah. be honest with you to write this particular story mm. um but the fact that the the person who lived the story and then wrote about it um is is happy with with how it's come out i'm i mean i'm, I'm stoked that i'm so that she's so excited about it and that it's like kind of at a draft where i want to start sending it to um festivals yeah um i, I would love to get it made um, this year that would be cool and, uh, in Oklahoma actually we're uh, a vastly growing um, film industry we, we've got some good tax credits from the state mm-hmm. um, that are actually better than Georgia's wow well, that's um, saying something I know um, uh, Scorsese is doing um, he's doing a film starting in February oh. Martin Scorsese um, so you got some small indie directors coming out there <laughs> yeah well yeah yeah <laughs> You might have heard of him. Yeah. Um, he, he's had a film that he's been working on forever um, that is, is finally getting uh, – it's been reported by Deadline. He's got seven months to shoot here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it's it's great. I mean, great tax incentives. Um, the people here – I've gotten to know one or two people who are locals or who have been here for a long time, and, and they say that the film industry has been growing a lot over the past – you know, five five years or so. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's one so of those. It's, it's really exciting. It used, yeah, yeah. I had to go to Hollywood to make a movie. You know, you had to go to where the movie making stuff was. But like, just like you know, past five, ten years, like things of you can make a movie wherever now. You know, the people are there. You just kind of have to have to find yeah. them and get them all together Absolutely. and stuff. So yeah, that's the the goal is to to make that film. Yeah. Um, and. Um, Hopefully that'll ha- hopefully that'll happen this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. You know something? Um, just to chime in, uh, Jason Usry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been on the show. He's a friend of uh, mine locally, and he's a screenwriter. He's had he's had a couple of um, movies produced. And 
one, I think one of the biggest challenges is finding funds. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. um, finding someone who wants to option it or produce it or whatever. If you're not doing it yourself, yeah. which I mean that. Just the way movies have always been. It's always been about finding the money and the producers that's and right. all that stuff. So that's. I think the cool thing about it, though, is because with the uh, inventor, the advan- advantageous nature of the internet, yeah, crowdfunding and stuff like that, there are like alternatives. Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah. don't you don't have to have you know an option by some big producer or yeah. whatever. You know, you can you can just pick it up and do it. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, filmmaking has become a lot cheaper than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you can rent a very high-end camera from the Internet, and if you've got four days and you can can knock out a short film, and most short films could be shot in four days if you've got a good schedule and, Mm -hmm. you know, a a quality crew, you know, you could spend almost no money on a quality camera if you've got a good story and good actors and people are passionate about getting that story told. You can do it for pretty cheap, and you can get it on the internet, like like uh, Josh was saying. I mean, um, yeah, there's so many options now for filmmakers. Yeah, which was one of the big hurdles when I was in high school, and we wanted to make our our zombie movie and all that. Like our options then were, you either get like a film camera and you buy all of this film, which we didn't have money for, or you buy mm-hmm. these you know expensive you know digital cameras you know um, with a bunch of tapes that we didn't have money for. So it was like. <laughs> You know, the phones at the time were like the the Motorola Razor was the hot thing. So, oh, yeah. like now with what, you know, you can do on an iPhone or these Androids or the Google phone, like in the cameras that are built into them, like you can shoot a low budget, you know, indie movie or a short film with your phone. It's not going to be, yeah. you know, Hollywood quality, but you can get it done. You can get that, you know, almost like a. You know, you can shoot the, the, the bones of the movie, and it's a lot easier to show somebody, hey, this is yeah. the kind of idea I have for my movie. It's just not shot with the best equipment. If you give me some money for that, you know, that <laughs> nice equipment, we could do a little a little something-something, you know? But, yeah. Uh, well, like, uh, have you all seen Whiplash? Mm-hmm. Oh, good movie. That, so he, so um, Damien, uh, what, Ch- Ch- Chavelle, Ch- Chazelle? What's yes. Name? Yeah, I think, I think Anyways, that's it. Um, he wrote a feature and got turned down by a bunch of studios. So he decided to take, he made it into a short. Mm-hmm. Um, he had um, J.K. Simmons as um, as the music teacher, and he made it into a short and got it into festivals. And then he started winning festival prizes. And then studios started like knocking on his door, saying like, "Okay, we've got money for you now." Mm-hmm. And that's how he got that film made. Um, he still shot it for like. He didn't shoot. I mean, he didn't spend any money on it. I don't know what the budget was, but it was like, it was like a million dollars or something, which is like really small budget. Yeah. Um, and he shot it in 19 days. Yeah. Which oh, is wow. also like an incredibly fast shooting schedule, especially like dealing with music and time and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, he knocked that guy out, and I love that move. Is great. I mean, great film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I haven't I mean, seen it yet. Did it. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I have really? to watch it. Yeah. Man, it's called Whiplash. 19 days. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Everybody, you're tuning in today to WRU LP Savannah, Georgia, <laughs> 107.5 FM, WRU.org. We are Savannah Sounding's Community Radio with Global Soul. Hmm. So, yeah, um, I I love, like, we, we started doing that dead pixel picture uh, thing, Josh, with uh, filmmaking. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting because I, I really – I've shot and done my own little, you know, videos or whatever, and mm-hmm. just through like TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Even before that, I when I I got a YouTube channel back in 2008, mm-hmm. and I started doing these little. I used to call them Messer Minutes. <laughs> it was like just a one minute motivational thing. I took them all down because yeah. I was like, oh, this is before like all this other stuff. Anyway, long story short. Like when we started doing this uh, film production last year, yeah, I, th- I have so much fun doing it. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, I think it's so much fun when we're out there, uh, you know, just taking that and then, you know, making it a story. Yeah, you I mean, know, and, and it's like what it. we were talking about in the first hour about being kids and playing with other kids. You know, that collaborative mm-hmm. storytelling that we all 
all do you know making up these worlds and you know adventures mm-hmm. and stuff like that that's I mean, that's pretty much what filmmaking is it's just a little bit more technical you know <laughs> yeah i, I yeah. love to like uh like for so I, I don't have a whole lot of film experience but um back in the day 2005 2006 my friend was going through his mfa here at scad so i was like his production buddy mm-hmm. like i was his, like a pa or whatever he needed kind of guy and um I wasn't a cameraman, but then when I was doing photography, mm-hmm. I did like set photos, like still photography oh, for cool. sets. And we did the 48 hour film festival in 2014 and all. And anyway, long story short, um, I did not really have a whole lot of interest in acting or doing film production, uh, just because I didn't like some of the ways that I saw things were going on or whatever. Um, uh, and I was kind of leery about it because there's a lot of phony stuff there's a lot of phony people that are like oh they name drop and mm-hmm. this and other and i don't think that that's what it's about you know so i just kind of stayed away from that scene uh but i think that there are a lot of great people out there doing stuff mm-hmm. you know genuine uh genuinely good people who are trying to do things and they're trying to you know share a story they're trying to you know get this out there uh because of their love for storytelling or for filmmaking or whatever and I feel like you could see that, you know, with a good storyteller. You can really feel it, you know, with their production. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is my opinion. Um, but I think people will forgive a movie if um, it looks bad, like if it's not shot on the greatest equipment mm-hmm. um, or if a shot or two is out of focus. Um, there is, they're less, they're less easy to forgive it if it sounds bad, like you can't hear anything, Mm -hmm. but the unforgivable is like making them spend their time. If it's an hour and a half film to watch a bad movie that's, or a bad story, that's just a bad, that there's no payoff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Robert McKee has got that phrase, a good story well told that he kind of opens up his, his book, uh, story with. Mm-hmm. And that mantra is one that I try to, you know, try to live by that. So if you have a good story and you tell it well, even if you have all the technical stuff that's not quite in place, a good story will, will last, you know, and that's, and that's, what's important. that's, what's important about anything that we do <laughs> as, as a novelist or as a filmmaker or as a playwright or, you know, short filmmaker, whatever it is, having yeah. a good story is the most important thing about what we do. I agree. You know, that kind of mm-hmm. makes me think about something else too. Not everybody's going to dig your type of storytelling. True. Right. I've had people that loved my writing and I've had other people that they, they just didn't like it at all. Mm-hmm. Like they couldn't finish it. And it's weird when you know you get somebody who's like oh just this is just wonderful 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 yeah and then you get somebody who's like i couldn't stand it it was like (laughs) it was like cold potato soup yeah (laughs) you're like well are you looking at the same story that this other person who was like no you're so wonderful (laughs) you know somebody like that happened to me recently you know and um it it's okay like i i love shawn of the dead Mm -hmm. i know that some people don't you know what I mean? And Sean is great. It's a funny movie. <laughs> yeah. I know some people just don't like, and uh, you know, I know horror is not for everybody. Yeah. I get it. Um, but I think as a, any kind of creator, you have to get somewhere around terms with not everybody's going to dig your stuff mm-hmm. yeah. and you're mm-hmm. not making it for everybody. Yeah. You right. know, like I'm not trying yeah. to write for, Everybody under the sun. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know that they're not going to want to read it, you know? So I feel like if you stay true to yourself and you do stay true to that storytelling, you know, like if you stay true to the story, you're going to you're gonna end up with a, a good product, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. if you put the work in. Because it's kind of like this. I, I tell my kids this, and I, I firmly believe this in life. Like when you're talking about you know, people to forgive it. If you're likable, people will forgive you when you mess up. Mm -hmm. But if you're Mm -hmm. not, people will ride you like a donkey. 
And I think it's the same thing with uh, any kind of storytelling. If they like the character or if the character's relatable, mm-hmm. they'll stick it out with like a slow burn. But there better be a yeah. payoff. Yeah. There better be a reward at the end. If you've got a mm-hmm. slow burn, even if the character's relatable or likable, and there is no story, then it doesn't matter how good the character is. Yeah. It's like I don't know. Have you seen Break have you seen Better Call Saul? <laughs> no. Yeah, I guess. Oh, have you seen Breaking Bad? Uh no. I have. Oh, oh man. <laughs> no. Adam, come on. Break, break about I know what they are. I know what they are. I just never watched them because of well, uh, AMC. So Better Call Saul is like, it is a slow burn. But Better Call Saul, for me, now, I will put the caveat in. I'm a huge, huge Breaking Bad fan. And uh, Saul Goodman as a character, to me, was just, like, fascinating in Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. But in Better Call Saul, he steps, you know, you step back in his life and you kind of watch him slowly evolve into Saul Goodman Mm -hmm. and it is a slow moving story but it's just like but see to me the the Breaking Bad would be the payoff because like you're getting all the backstory of how did he become whatever yeah yeah I mean I guess as part of it you have it in your mind if you've seen if you've seen Breaking Bad you know where this character ends up so just like watching him slowly kind of like with the Walking Dead and that other show that's out what's the new one yeah Fear of the Walking Dead. I thought Breaking Bad had a tie-in with that. Like he somehow or another, he was the one that caused the. Isn't that the theory? Like he caused the yeah, whole zombie those, apocalypse. Those internet theories. Oh, is that what happened? I didn't yeah. That far. Yeah. They're all interrelated because like he's one of the zombies in the series, right? I don't remember that. I'm pretty sure he's one of the zombies, and like in one of the shows, because like they they saw in one of those little meme theory conspiracy type things that like they showed a picture of him. Yeah, I don't I don't know if you know this, but you probably shouldn't believe everything you see on the internet. Why not? I thought it was the internet. We had like cats riding (laughs) unicorns with laser beams and stuff, man. No, I do know that in the first season, uh, Merle, one of the characters on there. He uh, he had some some meth on him and it was blue. I heard it was all the same was, universe. It was it kind of like it was. I think they made nods to Breaking Bad and uh, The Walking Dead, but uh, as a, an official canon, I don't think they're connected. I don't know. Wow, as I as the as the resident zombie nerd, I'm gonna have to shoot that theory down. <laughs> You're gonna say that's a conspiracy. <laughs> nice. Yeah, <laughs> nice. But uh, it's good to know. <laughs> okay, so I watched uh, No Country for Old Men. Did y'all oh, watch yeah. that? Have y'all seen oh, that? Good. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that that's a pretty good movie. I was disappointed with the ending. How come? Just was anticlimactic for me. Like the part where he broke his arm at the end, I thought there was going to be you know some no, kind spoilers. of spoilers. Well, it's it's out <laughs> 13, 14 just years, man. You. Like you know how how long do we have to wait? <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think that's a that's when you should probably read the book. I mean, yeah, Cormac McCarthy's writing style is just incredible i mean you, have, have y'all read the road Mm-mm. i started it and then um, I, I never finished it really yeah I was, oh man he just, but i was a younger he man so me, he just drugged me along in that book like i i, I finished it in about two sittings i mean but his his value is in the writing itself i mm-hmm. think for cormac i mean he's a good he's a good storyteller but like the road oh. is is it's a it's a good um I mean, it's, it's kind of a basic apocalyptic story, but just the way he writes it is so, so. Oh, I was enthralled watching the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, like this this guy who's kind yeah. of like a mafioso serial killer, and I can't remember the actor's name. Oh my gosh! But the way that they got Morton, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like I said, I'm not, I'm not like I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, like I'm not the nerd nerd on the mm-hmm. names, but the guy, the way he portrayed the serial killer. Uh, he hit he hit it right on the, the head. Yeah. And matter of fact, I saw one of those those. Uh, hey, Bill, how you doing, man? Hey, great. Good. Thank you. We're just sitting here talking about storytelling and filmmaking. I've been listening. Uh, <laughs> and so I saw one of those um, behind the scenes videos where people are just talking about the movie and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they said that the dude's haircut was uh they were going through like some kind of yearbook or something like that and they just saw this they saw a picture of this guy with the same haircut like that like that same kind of bob haircut yeah and 
and they they said this is the character. Thank you, man. This is this is what his haircut's going to be like. Mm. And so, but the way he portrayed that um, psychopath, yeah. you know, the one scene where he's in that little country store and he's asking the guy all these questions. You haven't seen it, right? I think I know the part you're talking about. Okay, I've seen so it like he, on uh, like Facebook, the little videos they randomly show me. Yeah, and he's he's uh, talking to the guy, and, and the guy's like, "Well, he's like, well, what are you talking about?" And he's like, "You know, you've known all along, or something like that." Yeah, and he flips a coin, you know, he flips a coin, and you know, now I think the part where uh, they caught the guy, not the caught the guy, but where uh, the serial murder caught up with the other dude that he's been chasing. Mm. I would have liked to seen the fight scene or the action scene there, but I think it had more suspense when they just came to the cut scene where it's like, well, he's, he's in the pool or mm-hmm. whatever. But, uh, I, yeah, I kind of felt like the ending was a little anticlimactic for me, but mm. yeah, maybe the book was better. I, I mean, I think that the film was great overall. Yeah. It's just when, when they're sitting at the, uh, the kitchen table talking and all, I'm like, I was kind of lost. I was like, is this supposed to be all be like a dream or was this like this guy was like this just happened and now he's, you know, an old retiree and, you know, I don't know. I was kind of lost at the, on the ending, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great, I think it was a great film. Yeah. You know, but I feel like that's another example of like how we all kind of, we all have different tastes. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all ever had a movie like that where you're like, oh man, I'm, you know. One that you didn't read the book and that you watch the movie and you're like, oh, this is such a great movie. And then the ending is like, <laughs> petered out. Yeah. I, as far as like books and movies go for me, I actually prefer to see the movie before I read the book. Yeah. Because if I read the book before I watch the movie, it ruins the movie for me. Like no matter what the movie, I'm just not going to like the movie. But if I um, see the movie, then I read the book. Um, it's it, it, they're both great to me at that time. So like Lord of the Rings would be a good example. I saw the movies before I read those books. Um, Hunger Games, same way. Great books, you know, good, good movies. But mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like if I had read them before I'd uh, watch the movies, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I mean, my mom's but, a big fan of those the uh, the Divergent, Divergent. Oh, dude, I was almost in that movie, like the last one. Yeah, they canceled it. Yeah, she loves that <laughs> first extra. movie. Oh, really? You were wow, yeah. But she and I told her yeah. I said there's a they're based off a series of books, mm-hmm. and uh, I never read the books. I, I'd never seen the movie before either, but she just loves it. Yeah, and it's like, uh, it's it's. I read the first uh, Divergent book in like a single sitting. I was actually, uh, I was I was working as a security guard, and uh, I had literally nothing to do for this one whole shift, so I just sat there and read this book. And uh, it's it's pretty good actually. Like the it's it's very entertaining. You know, nice. you talk about escapism. It's 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 pretty entertaining. Uh, it's not bad at all. I I, I wouldn't. Uh, I didn't want to read the rest of them. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we got to do our mid hour break. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute or two, y'all. Hello, Radio Land. You are listening to WRUU LP, Savannah, Georgia. Uh-huh. One oh seven point five FM WRUU dot org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. This portion of WRUU Savannah Soundings programming is brought to you by listeners and the Ships of the Sea Museum. The wait is over. The Ships of the Sea Museum has reopened with access to the first floor. We are one of two historic museums with accessibility lift. The gift shop is filled with local specialties such as handcrafted soaps and cheese straws, a savory southern tradition. More information can be found at shipsofthesea.org. What does it mean when we say that WRUU is a community radio station? It doesn't just mean that we invite the community to create programming. And it doesn't just mean that we are a voice for the community. It also means that we are counting on the community to keep us going. And you are the community. Almost all of our modest budget comes from small, annual, or monthly donations from listeners like you. You get to enjoy our community-focused programming because many others have stepped forward to do their part. 
Now do your part by joining our community of listener donors. Go to WRUU.org right now and make a one-time or monthly donation. And thank you for supporting Savannah's community radio station, 107.5 FM. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the Adam Messer Show. And if you're just now tuning in, thank you so much. Uh, We have been talking the last hour and a half or so with uh, John C. Arnold and Stephen Arnold and my special co-host, Josh Vasquez. That's me. And Josh, you had like a, a actually good question, didn't you? Yeah. So my question is both for uh, John and Stephen, um, because you guys are brothers. How, how uh, what's the age difference between y'all? Uh, two years, right? Two years. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay. And that that wasn't my my good question that Adam was talking are about. You sure? just, that was that was a lead. <laughs> that was a good question too. All right, guys, though. and thanks <laughs> for that answer. And uh, Adam, back to you. <laughs> So, <laughs> um. see, do y'all see why I like Josh so much? He's like got such a neat little sense of humor. Um, no, so yeah, you guys uh, both, you know, storytellers in your own right, you know. So, have you guys ever done any like kind of collaboration together? Like, have you ever done any work together as far as like, uh, you know, writing or storytelling or anything? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, we well, this one time at band camp, right? <laughs> yeah, in collaboration. We collabed uh, with uh, a. We, we were both in the play The Nerd by uh, Larry. It's played by Larry Shue. Um, and we 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 were uh, we we did that together. That was a lot of fun. Um, and we worked on a. We, I, I I know you sent a few screenplays to me just to look at and read and tell you what I think. I think it was uh, that that feature you did um, on the guy that you're you're not doing the feature on anymore. Uh, I'm gonna read that one. Uh, and we uh, worked on my my buddy Todd is a is a he you would you would actually get along with him a lot. He does a he he's wanting to do a film horror anthology as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they call it uh, the Thirteenth, and uh, we wrote a few screenplays for him. Um, yeah, just based off of his uh his uh, what, what do you call them uh, the they were like the guess, premise or outlines the yeah or... okay yeah yeah so yeah we we've done we've done a few things yeah um yeah it's I tell you just just doing that together uh John is really in, in my opinion John's really good at story structure mm-hmm. so he like. I, I think there's these, uh, I think they're called script doctors. Yeah. Um, man, he, he crushes it. Like he, he knows exactly like he'll tell me exactly what I was doing wrong. Like it's like, dude, this is a screenplay, not a novel. Mm-hmm. Like hard for me. Cause I said, they're only given all the, all the description, like, you know, the way the, the light glints off the, the glass and all this kind of stuff, which is, you know, sometimes necessary, but usually not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it was it's interesting working together because I got I got a little bit better by doing that. Now, I, I mean, I I think we probably helped each other in that way. That iron sharp, sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. I don't know, what do you yeah. think, John? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's it is it is uh it's fun to to work with Stephen because I I do appreciate his uh, imagination and he. So if you haven't been able to tell, he reads a lot mm-hmm. and he reads very fast, and I do not. <laughs> I, I have a hard time reading novels. Um, I don't know why. I can sit down and read a play or a screenplay and be, like, totally content. But it's something about, I don't know, maybe I'm just lazy or something. That's something about reading novels. That, I, I'm trying to get better at it because reading makes you, you know, smarter and opens your brain and all these things. Yeah. Um, but I, just I like I like how you said yet. that, John. I, I like you're like it's like and all these things. Yeah, <laughs> I get it because like I sometimes, man, I I have to like have a physical book in my hand, or yeah. like listen to the audio book of it because I yeah, I, I'm totally there with you. There's sometimes where I'm like, oh yeah, I can I can run right through this book, and then there's other times where I'm like, <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. Um, two hundred more pages. <laughs> totally lost my train of thought, but yeah, I, I've oh, um, so he he's got a worldview and he he's read things and he's experienced stories that are different than mine, mm-hmm. um, than the ones that I have experienced. Even though we have seen a lot of the same movies, um, we have played the same video games a lot of the time. Mm. Yeah. Um, and but he's got this other like fantasy like side that i don't i don't like incorporate i i enjoy some most of the fantasy things that i watch and i enjoy comic book movies mm-hmm. and i do enjoy reading comic books but he's got this 
like a, like a like I said, he's got this different understanding of that part of the world of the story that I don't. So it's always fun to kind of collaborate with him in that way, just because of we we think differently and we see we see things differently. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, also a big difference between us is I think John, you're more I think you're more of a plotter, and I am certainly more of a pantser. <laughs> like I, I like to sit down, I have an idea of where I want to go and how I want to end it. Yeah, but that's kind of it, you know. And I just sit down and I write and I just roll with it. Well, and you said uh, you said you're the the middle child. Yeah. Well, that kind of you know. That makes a lot of sense that the, the, the oldest would be more of the plotter and, you know, kind of the more, you know, structure and all that with the, the middle child's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more free willed, a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> devil I, may uh, care. Well, I, I think, I think it also has to do with like, uh, kind of our, where we learned how to write. Um, mm-hmm. John, I mean, I know John talks about a lot of John Truby's anatomy of story. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That, and, that's uh, big, Robert that's McKee's me a lot. I, I my first book on writing the book, the book that that um, really got me to be able to sit down and actually write and and I, I wrote I wrote a whole, a whole novel while I was out at a, a TBS. I just sit there in the evenings and on the weekends I mm-hmm. wrote it. Um, it was a really good time and I pants it. But the book I read before that was on writing by Stephen King. Yeah, yeah. And if you've ever read that, it's it's a wonderful book. His, yeah. It's part biography, part just how to do it. Yeah, he's a big and pantser. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what he does, man. He he pan, he pants out um uh, all these incredible books. Yeah, and he sits on it for a few weeks and then goes over it once or twice, and you know that's typically it for him. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's really uh, it's kind of a it's a it, it's freedom, but also sometimes kind of a. The, the problem I, I run into, like I, I'm actually running to that now, where I've pants my way so far off my outline, mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, how do I bring this back? Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's yeah, where it's editing got, comes it's in, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or the uh, cutting comes. floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I think that's a really interesting parallel too, because Josh and I, um, when I first started doing fiction writing, mm-hmm. uh, Josh was really like into the editing. Yeah, and I just didn't like editing. Yeah, well, I was uh, I was approached editing from like kind of almost like a filmmaking aspect too. Like yeah. like it was said in the first uh, first hour, you know, that's the films are made on the editing table. You know, yeah. well, since then I've come to appreciate editing. I still don't like it as much. Yeah, but I ha- I do appreciate it because you get a chance. Like you know, you can't edit a blank page, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, right. and if you. If you're so far off, like kilter with the story, you know, uh, one of the guys that I really enjoy, uh, just this last year started listening to and watching and reading his stuff is Ray Bradbury. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he talks about writing. He did like all these lectures. He like he did this whole lecture series or whatever. And, um, one of the things that he said was, uh, with his stories is that if you have like writer's block, mm-hmm. it's just your heart telling you that that's not you know, the story that you want to write. Yeah. And, okay. uh, you know, I don't feel like I, I could be wrong here, but I don't feel like he, um, I don't feel like he was much of an outliner because, you know, he would just write and he wrote short stories. Like mm-hmm. even his, mm-hmm. his novels were collections of short stories. Yeah. You know, like the Martian Chronicles, they were a collection of short stories, um, that he, that he pieced together. So, um, well, there's I a think, lot of great, like Sam Shepard, um, he he was a pantser. He didn't he didn't plot anything. He he came before he passed away. He came to the Savannah Film Festival and he gave a talk. Mm-hmm. I was fortunate enough to go listen to him talk. And someone asked him about his process, and they asked him this question: or, Do you plot before, or do you just you know write until you finish it? And he said, "I never plot. I just kind of sit down and I write the story. And when I get to the end of it, I know it, and that's it." That's how we did it. Yeah, yeah. Shepard, you yeah. Know, he's a great playwright. He's a great, um, great screenwriter. Um, so it works, and it works for some people. And that's kind of the beauty about storytelling is because it is it is as organic to the story. T- the storyteller is organic. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, that um, makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause... So like, so Stephen he pants his things, but me, I. Um, I like, I'm, 
I, and I think this is also how I was like trained and how I learned how to write and tell stories in the academic sense of it um, is that the character's got to have an arc, mm-hmm. you know, and your 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 hero has to learn something, and sometimes it's it's hard to start your hero on this journey and then get to the midway point and be like, I don't know. I don't know what this hero, I don't know what this hero's problem is. I don't know what he's fighting for and I don't know where he's going, you know? And so for me, I have to kind of see all of that beforehand. Even if I don't know all the details, I like to see at least the beginning and at least the end and kind of piece everything in the middle so that I know that the story is at least heading in a direction where there is like catharsis and there is change in the character. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we talk uh, uh, like on the show. We talk a lot about um, the hero's journey, and we talk about like one of my favorite ones is "Save the Cat" writes a novel by mm-hmm. Jessica Brody, and then "Save the Cat" uh, by Blake Snyder. He did this whole series, yeah. and he's got these beats that you follow with the hero's journey, and there there's something to be said about both sides. I mean, it's like a recipe. For example, you know. If I said if I said Josh, I want to make chili and spaghetti. Yeah. What would you think? Um, I'm gonna make chili and spaghetti. What kind of chili? <laughs> uh, well, if making chili and spaghetti. I mean, my my. Let me see. Uh, that's I, what I'm asking. I, I fall on team beans. You know, beans got to be in the chili. I know that's okay. a big thing. People are like, no, man, you put beans in chili. That's a stew. <clears throat> like I I hear you, but you're wrong. You know. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, John? What would you think if I said I want to make chili and spaghetti? I feel like it's it's uh, two of my favorite foods. Bring them on. Yeah. All right. Um, what kind of chili though? I don't care. Roadkill chili is good. All right. <laughs> and Stephen, what about you, man? If I said I want to make chili and spaghetti, I mean, I'm thinking it's like, well, what kinds could be? Is gonna be jalapenos in it? Are you gonna what kind of spaghetti and chili? Is this gonna put nice cheese on it? And, I don't know. If the world's your oyster. You can do whatever you want with it. All right. You so know, if I told y'all when I was growing up. <laughs> When when my family said they're making chili and spaghetti, mm. they made a meat sauce with spaghetti. Yeah. All right. So okay. we call it spaghetti here. Like uh, I don't I don't know anybody that calls it chili and spaghetti here. So if I said I want chili, yeah, and spaghetti, I mean I want a meat sauce with spaghetti. I like guess spaghetti sauce. Mm. Right. But if I said I want chili, yeah, and without spaghetti, just saying chili, yeah, then I want chili. I don't want spaghetti sauce. Right, I don't uh, want meat sauce. Gotcha. And so, here's the thing, though: everybody that makes chili and spaghetti, or everybody that makes spaghetti sauce or yep. their own sauce, they all have a different way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Some people follow family mm-hmm. recipes. Some people get it out of the can. Yeah. You know, some people take ramen and ketchup and make their own little spaghetti. Sure no. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even kidding. Everybody's got a different thing, right? Everybody, mm-hmm. but at the end of the at the end of the course of making it, people are having a meal. Yeah. Same mm-hmm. thing with storytelling. Like we all have a different way of making things. You know, I don't know that there's any new style of storytelling mm-hmm. out there. Yeah. Really, I think all it is is just we're giving our own interpretation of a story, and we're mm-hmm. introducing something that's old, but we're making it new again. Yeah. That's the thing about about like about like writing advice and like reading like books on writing and stuff like that. Like I've read on writing by Stephen King. Same here. I've read, you know, like the Saves the Cat and stuff like that and like it's all great, but like as far as writing advice goes, I mean you I, I see so many young authors get so wrapped up in like I got to do it this way. I have to, I have to do it this way mm-hmm. or you know, like I have to learn. I have to learn more before I write the book. Like you will learn more yeah. about writing by writing that book writing then you will book. continue yeah. to reading and writing badly yeah and not being afraid mm-hmm. to write badly yeah. and like, and using adverbs in your language if you want to yeah like that's the thing it's like <laughs> it, you know the, the, the i don't know how many times i've so, seen somebody say don't use adverbs yeah don't use adverbs don't use adverbs or like, the it's part of this the seven parts of speech isn't it <laughs> yeah or like uh mm-hmm. the whole thing about showing and not telling you don't have to show, you know, every single detail of the living room, you know? Like, John went into the living room. Like, that's all you need. Yeah. Adam and Josh discussed, you know, spaghetti making in yeah. the living room. Yeah, you don't, uh, like, sometimes the language gets too flowery where it's like, oh you know, gosh. you don't, 
you just dial it back a little bit. Now that's the thing about riding devices. I feel like a lot of people get so wrapped up with trying to like follow the rules and like doing it like this way and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, you have to use what works for you, whether it's plotting or whether it's pantsing. Sometimes you use a little bit of both. Sometimes you write that outline, but then you just kind of go wherever you need to. I've tried both ways, yeah. and like I end up being a planter. Yeah. You know, like between <laughs> yeah. the two. Yeah. And it, talking about that, I love high fantasy stuff. When I was a kid, I used to read a lot of it, mm. right? But mm -hmm. as a writer, I like action. Like if you read yeah. any of my stuff, it's action oriented. Yeah. But I also like dialogue. I like conversations. Yeah. You know, so I have I have a lot of meaty conversations. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and, you know, but some people don't like that. Yeah, you got a lot of chilly conversations. I do well, talk about spaghetti sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, no, uh, Andre Spalski is good, but uh, his Witcher series, if you've ever read that, it's um, it's it's action and a lot of dialogue. I've heard and the books I are really love, good. Oh my gosh, they are they are incredible. His, I was worried because I I was afraid he peaked with the Last Wish, which is his first book. It's a bunch of short stories yeah. of uh, Daryl just doing side quests. And it's amazing. I mean, the commentary he has on like modern day politics, religion, uh, just anything you can think of is 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 incredible. The way he the way he tells his stories, and they're all through conversation. He is like he has like themes, um, and he writes some really beautiful stuff. Like uh, in the latest book I read from him, uh, he said, "Don't mistake reflection in the pool for the night sky." Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's and awesome just what he means by that yeah. beautiful yeah. you know oh, man <laughs> deep it's like every time I, whenever I read whenever i read something from him like that i'm just i'll just go back and little books like oh, dude you are not up to snuff yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It up. no definitely we're gonna do the uh station id real quick you're listening to wruulp savannah georgia 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And, uh, yeah, so. I love it. I, you know, we got about 10 minutes left. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's the whole variety of storytelling, right? It's just kind of mm -hmm. like going back to chili and spaghetti. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can make it. Some people tell you there's only one right way to make it. Yeah. And they might have a darn Four good. Times. You know, they might have a darn good way to, to do it. But then you don't yeah. want to get confused Yeah, with yeah. looking at the reflection in a pool and thinking it's a night sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you don't want to get confused yeah. and, and think like that ketchup and ramen is the best thing. Yeah. And, you know, you haven't, you've never tasted you've the never real had, sauce. You've never had the true spaghetti. I'm telling you. Like, <laughs> you know, always be open to trying out the other sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what's cool, like we can also throughout our careers, if we continue to write until we're dead, we will probably dabble in all different types of writing techniques mm -hmm. before it's all said and done. You know, we'll oh, yeah. we'll we'll eventually probably just go through the gamut of all right, this is how we're gonna write this story, and then you write a story and like all right, I'm gonna just pants this next one, and I'm gonna do a very detailed plot on the next one, you know, and just try it all and that's kind of the fun of writing is, yeah is, mm -hmm. well like grr yeah. martin man like the dude writes on a computer from like 1982 right <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. and he's got a way that works for him yeah you know i think when you find your gig very very slowly when you find it and it's your it's your <laughs> your, your gig i mean like i'm yeah. still trying to find like what works best for me like i was yeah. the last couple yeah. of years i've been writing on scrivener yeah I've been using uh, oh, yeah. Dragon, uh, what's that, uh, the voice? The dictation. Yeah, and uh, like this last one, the one that I'm putting out on Patreon, like yeah. a chapter at a time, straight up on Word. Yeah. I'm, I'm Straight up on Word. I'm Word all how, day. How do, you, how do you feel about that, Adam? If you, don't, if you don't mind me asking, like putting up your books one, one chapter at a time. Okay, so I like it. I do, because uh, Patreon is... I have a, a really small community and I love, I love the folks that, you know, that support me on Patreon. And I was like, how can I give them something that I can, I, I'm the only one that can give them something. And Bobby Nash is a good friend of mine and he's been doing that. So I was asking him, I was like, well, how do you do this or whatever? And for me, it has been a lot of fun because I'm just writing a chapter at a time. I, I, I have a mm -hmm. premise on it. 
and I've been putting out a chapter at a time, mm-hmm. but I don't know what's going to happen. Matter of fact, I got stuck in a scene where I was like, I don't know what these yeah. characters are going to do. <laughs> yeah. And Dude. they weren't talking to me. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. I was like, I, I didn't, didn't touch it for like over a week. <laughs> I was a week ahead in publishing, so I was okay. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, this is not good. Do you well, I... get feedback from your Patreon supporters? Do what? Do you get feedback from your Patreon supporters? I have. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, we, we've only got about five or six minutes left. So this is something that like Josh and I have been talking about. I've been talking with my friend Matt. I have been turning into and towards the folks that are turning in and towards me. And mm-hmm. I always t- I talk about building relationships. I talk about focusing on my relationships a lot uh, because things come and go. I don't really care about, you know, material things. I do care about being able to take care of my family and I, I'd like to, you know, be financially independent and all that good stuff you know, just as a tool. But what I've noticed with the way that I've been trying to build this community is by like folks like Josh, for example, Josh has been with me since the very beginning. Josh is one of the major folks that has inspired me to write, you know, a fiction, Mm -hmm. you know, and Josh has always been supportive. We, we do different projects and things like that together. Like even doing this today, being a co-host today, I was like, Josh, can you please help me out? Because in a couple of weeks, I've got to work on the weekend. I cannot do my show. And Josh has been on before. Josh is a person that, you know, he is, he's got things that, you know, we have in common. We have differences, you know, of things that we do differently and whatever. But I've noticed with, with Patreon, it's, it's like that. So the folks that want to be there are there. Mm-hmm. Just like uh, you know, I've been focusing more on email. And sending it to people that they want to read that stuff. Because we get so inundated. We're sold to 24-7. And it gets it gets old. You know, like I get tired of being sold to all day. Yeah. You know, like social media and stuff like that. It's, it's, it just gets old. <laughs> you know, so the folks that want to you know, be there, the folks that want to check it out, that I don't care if I've got one person or if I've got, uh, you know, 10,000. It doesn't matter. I would much rather have one solid person like Josh in my corner than 10,000 likes on Facebook any day of the week. That's awesome. If that makes any sense, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Adam. I love you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so finishing up, like, uh, one, can you tell us where to find you all stuff? And then two, if you could write in any fictional universe, what would it be? Dun, 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 oh. dun, dun, yeah, that's me. Dun, yeah, <laughs> that's Josh. Um, <laughs> I would write for the X Men. Oh, yeah, yeah, very cool. I love the X Men yeah. or Batman, Dark Knight Batman. Yeah, I am the Knight. <laughs> <laughs> you merely adopted the darkness. <laughs> I was born in it, raised in it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I actually have a uh, yeah I'll definitely do Batman. I had a um, you know what? I would either do Batman or I'd like to write Neil Gaiman's Sandman. Yeah, that, that oh. comic series. Of, have you seen have his you, new that, Norse mythology comic that's out right now? I didn't know he was making a comic. I read his book. The first four issues are out, and it's it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 great. Have you read Have you read a Sandman? No, I have not. But I have oh, read. I've read several of his other books. One of my favorites recently was Good Omens. Hmm. That, oh, uh, yeah. The series That's hilarious. The yeah. How about um, you, John? A Nancy Boys. Oh, really sorry. Good. A Nancy Boys, yeah. So. No game. That's, that's a great one. How about you, John? Um, I You know what? I would, probably, I would write in Star Wars, I think. Yeah. Um, but I think I would want to write in the Mandalorian Star Wars world because it's it's that western it's that space western spaghetti westerns yeah josh told me y'all i swear because i was i was like oh (laughs) josh and i just had this conversation a month ago josh is like the mandalorian doesn't feel like star wars the mandalorian is star wars yeah yeah absolutely and i was like dude i still haven't watched it (laughs) yeah oh man (laughs) i'm like the worst i told y'all i like film and stuff but i'm not the film nerd yeah you know like i'm not the uh who was that guy in that movie i'm like i don't know (laughs) because i'll tell you i have to look it up (laughs) 
Well, thanks all so much for being great. on the show today. Um, like Josh said, where can people find your stuff? Because I'm going to put a link on the podcast as well. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm on Facebook and my ins- I don't have a business Instagram, but it's like John. It's John C. Arnold eighty nine. Um, that's where you can find my Instagram, and then I have a portfolio website that can be linked from there. It's too difficult to say. Gotcha online but yeah just find me on instagram john c arnold 89 it's my birth year in case anyone was really wondering but everyone knew that's what it was hey, no, was a good year <laughs> yeah um you can find me my instagram handle is um at author stephen e arnold that's stephen spelled the ph um so uh i do I, just, I basically got a bookstagram i didn't realize that i was building a bookstagram so you can find me on there and I'll, I'll sometimes show you some of my stuff um i had i used to have a medium well i still have a medium account but i don't i don't really write on there anymore but i got a bunch of non-fiction articles on medium um gotcha. and it, that just be Stephen e arnold as well how about you josh uh, you can go to savannahzombienovel.com, and that's my main uh, website and all that stuff. And I just recently cleaned it up, so it's a little bit easier to read. Um, and then Savannah Zombie Novel on uh, Instagram, which you can also find the link to the Savannah Zombie Podcast on there as well. Nice, nice. Well, cool. thanks, y'all, for being here on the show today. I really appreciate it. Yeah. All yeah, right, guys. It was good talking to you. Thanks.